In this video, I'm going to show you how you can generate this type of stock footage on your local machine. We're going to build a workflow together and explore a really, really cool technique to upscale the output to beyond 1080p using Animate DFLCM and IP adapter encoding. There's a good chance you're going to improve your config skills in the process and more importantly, understand what's going on beneath the hood. So let's go. The videos you're looking at were generated with Zeroscope. Zeroscope is a model scope video model that's unique in the sense that it's watermark free. It's using a two-step system to generate high quality videos at 1024 by 576, which we will then upscale further. The first model generates 320p video, the second step upscales them, which is very clever because unless you have a Grace Hopper cluster sitting in your basement, you know you're going to want to explore both the prompt and the seed space by generating loads of quick test video, gauge the output, and then, and only then, upscale the better ones to larger resolutions, preferably while you sleep. As usual, I've made the whole thing available online and because I can already read the comments, yes, evidently this is not Sora, neither does it claim to be. It's however outputting some of the better video content you can generate locally right now, today. And given that it was only trained on less than 10,000 clips with 30,000 frames tagged, I really wish the team had more financial means to train it even further uh, because I can see the vision. Note that this video does have chapter, but because I'm a new channel, YouTube is being very difficult, so check the description for links and timestamps. Let's get noodling. All right, so we're going to need a bunch of stuff. First, we need the nodes, obviously, and don't worry about the models themselves because the author Serpents has built them so they would download automatically. I still recommend you check out both Hugging Face repos for the first and the second model. And also it wouldn't hurt if you read the docs because there's a lot of very interesting stuff in there, which is probably gonna get implemented a little bit later. I talked to the author, he's super nice, and I really want to give him credit here for the hard work that is done, especially when we get to the upscale you're gonna absolutely love it it's pure genius all right so let's get noodling very straightforward stuff we clear the workflow so we have a blank slate and we need to load the first node which is going to be our model t to v which stands for text to video the other one being the upscaler v to v but we need t to v so the node looks like this and immediately we see a little problem the prompt is way too small so we're gonna fix this we're going to go and add a prompt now Depending on what you have installed, there's a ton of option. Personally, I like to use a specific one for the, from a developer called Surge. I'm going to use that prompt text and I'm going to go and recolor it because I know you guys love it and I want to make you happy. So <laughs> I'm going to make it red for the negative and green for the positive. Very straightforward stuff. Right. So now I need a prompt. I'm going to type a field of flowers viewed from above, like a, like a drone shot. You can put whatever you want in there, by the way, and you can play with it, knock yourself out. That It's all part of the fun, it's to explore. Next, I need to go and convert my prompt to input, my negative to input, so that I can connect them to my existing prompt. That's really also very easy. This is the easy part of the tutorial. Uh, and I'm gonna drag them uh, correctly onto the right inputs. Very good. Now I need to put some negative text. I'm gonna choose bad quality, illustration, cartoon, uh, CGI. We're gonna put, um, let's see, illustration. Uh, let's put painting. Let's stick in drawing as well. I like photorealistic. I just like it. If you want something else, use something else. And next, I need to obviously combine the output of my frames, so basically all the images that form the video into one, into an MP4. So I'm gonna use video combine for that, connect the two. And now we can look at the options. So number of inference steps, that think of it as the steps in the case sampler, it's pretty much the same. If you put a high number, it's gonna look better sometimes, but it's also gonna be a lot slower to process. Now, I tend to go for something like 100, I've also used 200 at times, but the default is 25, so I'll go and I'll use, say, 30. Let's go for that. Next is guidance scale. Think of it as your CFG. Uh, again, the higher, the more it will respect your prompt, but 12 is a good number. For the seed, I'm gonna pick something like, well, not 42 because that's the answer to everything. I'm gonna put my lucky seed of 7.7, but here you have to be a little bit careful because 
if you use a prompt that says, for example, Will Smith eating spaghetti, and then you use, say, Bjork eating spaghetti, and you have the same seed, it's going to look like the same scene. They'll be sitting at the same chair in the same environment. And this, I discovered, has to do with the low number of clips this was trained on. So be mindful of this. So for now, we'll use a random seed. When it comes to width and height, you don't want to change those parameters because evidently the first model was trained at that resolution. So let's leave it as such. Next is the number of frames. And here again, there are certain parameters you need to respect. Above 24, you might see the image become strange, artifacts being created, and at 48, something like that, it's just noise being returned. Look, it's very artistic, but that's not what we want. And below 24, you're not gonna get great results either, so stick to 24. Think a bit like uh, SVD, for example, where you know you have a certain number of frames you're gonna have to work with in order to then expand by, say, creating some sort of slow motion effect, something like that. It works the same. Next, we're going to look at our video combined parameters because sometimes people struggle a little bit with those. So the number of frames is gonna be 24. We want it to be smooth. We want that 24 FPS, that movie feel. For the compression, we're going to use H24 MP4. The reason for that is it gives us access to the CRF parameter, which makes it much easier than bitrate. Four is basically lossless or near lossless. After that, it's kind of a placebo effect, if you will. And of course, the file name prefix, let's name it something meaningful, zero scope, stage, one, because we want to keep those files. You'll see why in a minute. Now we just need to hit Q and it's going to return something. I'm going to speed it up. There we go. So we get results, but the flowers are a little bit bland. Let's change it. Let's put a field of multicolored flowers, something like that. And, and look, I'm doing this because I want you to understand this is the exploration stage. It's very important for you to do these modifications now. This is fast. It will not stay that fast, especially when we get to the upscaling part of things. So explore, 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 change the seed until you're happy with the composition. That's how it works. I'm going to hit Q again. And sure enough, our flowers are now beautiful and wonderfully colored. I'm very happy with those results. The file is saved to disk because we chose the true option for the save. But now we need to go and add the second part, the second model, and therefore the second node. That's obviously the upscaler that's designed specifically for zero scope videos. Now in there, we see immediately another problem. The prompt is asked again. So here I'm going to do a little bit of uh, video editing magic. We're going to create our first reroute. Uh, some people have asked for this. So you just type reroute, you need RG3 installed, you select it, right click, there's keyboard shortcuts, but you can follow what's on screen to see how it's done. You retitle it, you right click it again to make it resizable, you resize it to the proper size and you have your first node. Great, now we can build a bus. So I drag a line, a noodle, I should say, between those two. I'm going to put them over there and we're going to fast forward this and have three of them identical. Great. So now I can grab my prompt and I can drag it to the bus and the negative prompt, do the exact same thing and my image because it's, it's required, of course, and port them over the second node. Here, I'm going to convert the prompt to an input, the negative to an input. And of course, Eventually, at one point, I'll do the seed, but let's just do this for now. I'm going to drag these uh, two lines and we need the frames there. OK, so now I'm going to copy the VHS video combine and I'm going to paste it, which is why the video is repeated. If you were wondering, I check all the settings. They're correct. Great. Now let's go and move our prompts around so it looks a little bit better. And we're going to add a seed. I'm going to use RG3 seed because as you know, I'm a big fan of this. It's going to help me have repeatable seeds. Let's hit new fixed random. There's a little catch here. I'll take you through it later. And of course, now we also need, as you can tell, a, the exact same inference steps parameter and the exact same guidance scales for both models. So to make it easier, but it's not required, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a primitive integer, which is from any type of node set you may have. There's tons of them. So pick whichever you like and a float that's for the CFG, of course. So that way I'm going to have a bus for that data that's going to go from the first to the second model and they're going to be in sync. I find that to be a really useful thing, especially when you generate hundreds of videos. So again, here I'm going to do some editing magic because it's a little bit boring and I'll see you when it's finished. Okay, I'm going to quickly change all these 
items to inputs so that I can drag my noodles. And now we have a proper boss. And let's check that our VHS combined settings are okay. They're okay, everything looks great. And of course, final step, we add our upscaler. So let's move this over there. And we're going to add a standard upscaler. We're gonna use the load upscaler model slash upscale picture via model. It's pretty straightforward. There's tons of choices, as many as you've downloaded from OpenModelDB. There's a new one that came out called Forex Realistic Rescaler 100,000G, which is a pretty funny name, but I'm partial to Forex Ultra Sharp V10, so I'm gonna use that in this example. Let's add an upscale image using model, and we're almost done. We just need to drag this noodle over there. There you go, almost there. And this one over here. But the issue of course is we can't just connect the image to video frames because we're using 4X. And again, this depends on what setup you have. So you need to do a downscale first if you're using a 4X model, most of you do. So let's go and use upscale image. We're gonna use the most box standard downscale possible to make it easy. We'll drag this noodle back to video frames. We're gonna change the settings to match what the model expects, 1024 by 576. There you go, if I type properly, it'd be even better. And we're gonna switch it to length source because the quality is slightly better and we're good to go. So now we just need to hit Q. I'm gonna fast forward the time for you. And now we get this output. That looks quite interesting actually, I think quite different from the first. So let's go and change or load up scale model. I wanna show you what that looks like. Hey, why don't we use the new one? <laughs> why not, right? And I'm gonna hit Q again, fast forward the time again, and look, the output is different again. So just keep that in mind. You're gonna get a different effect and you'll have to choose the right rescaler for the job depending on your subject. If it's a face, you need to use a face model and so on and so forth. So now we have some pretty cool flowers. There's even one floating in the wind, which is pretty neat. But obviously now we need to upscale the output and this is unfortunately where we hit a bit of a brick wall. Why a brick wall? Well, if you watch my other videos, you know you have basically two options at this point. One would be to encode the frame into a latent and then upscale that latent, maybe in multiple passes to save on VRAM. But the issue of course is that you're gonna lose temporal consistency because each frame is gonna be reimagined individually from each other. It's not gonna look good, guys. So the other solution is to use a pixel-based upscale or something that does not change the frame. But the problem here, of course, is that it doesn't look very good because it's just that, just a basic pixel upscaler. So of course I can hear some of you saying, why didn't you try Supir, etc.? Well, of course Supir was the first thing I tried because I like the way it reinvents the image, but not that much. And unfortunately it didn't work because if I was to use a very high control net, it would give me an image that quite frankly didn't look as good as what I'm about to show you. And second, if I did loosen the control net, then well, I would lose temporal consistency because of course Supir internally is using a stable diffusion super resolution upscaler which is going to modify the image between frames so you get the point we're stuck in a loop it's horrible but don't worry there is a solution that the author of those notes came up with and I think it's pretty genius if you ask me so I've implemented it into this workflow and I want to take you through it so you understand exactly how it works step by step because we're gonna do several things in parallel it's really exciting let's go Okay, so let me take you through the basics of the workflow. It works exactly like my usual tutorial workflow where we have a model pipeline, where we load a model. In this case, I chose Epic Realism, but you can pick anything you want. A LoRa loader, we'll get back to that in a sec. And every possible option you wanted on your mobile pipeline. Everything is controlled with bookmarks. You just hit two and it gives you access to the switches. So for example, let's imagine we wanted to test something. I would enable zero scope stage one. You can click here to go see what it looks like. I left you some notes because I love you guys. And it gives you all the information you need to get started. So here we have exactly what we had prior, except it's a little bit better organized where we have a nice little bus here using RG3 nodes. Well, you get the drift. It's pretty straightforward to understand. And that's our second step. Now let's go and re-enable that. And the third step, which is our upscaler. So I'll start with the second step. In the second step, nothing has changed. We just added a preview, which allows you to test the various types of upscalers and their creative output, if you will. So we're talking about things like Forex Ultra Sharp, Full Hardy Remacry is pretty good as well. So give it a shot. Really depends on your image, okay? And then here we have the famous upscaler. So how does it work? Well, to start, it takes a prompt, but not just any prompt. 
eventually it takes the prompt that we passed at first and it adds a little bit to it. In this case, it requires some smooth motion, high quality. I put 4K in there out of luck, but you know, guys, seriously, this doesn't work, okay? This is just for fun. And don't forget your negative prompt, watermark, text signature blurry. Again here, nothing to worry about. This data set doesn't have any watermarks, so it's kind of redundant. I've left some for you here so you can play with that as well and try new things. It's all about exploring. And if you wanted to just upscale a video from stage one or two, preferably stage two, of course, you could select it here. Now, this is from a little short movie I'm making. It's about a certain person called uh, Imad Altmusk who has a son and that son uh, takes over the world by selling AIs that scare people as a, as a marketing strategy, you know, like fear something. I'm not going to say the word. Anyway, so that's what I'm working on right now. Let's get back to being serious, okay? So in the pipeline, we have a context node. In there, it contains everything you need. The model, clip V, positive, negative, etc. But of course here we override it with our own conditioning which stems from the post prompt and the negative prompt added for good measure. Now what's the magic? Well the magic is using animate diff. This is not a tutorial on animate diff but just so you understand I'm using the gen 2 nodes meaning they look a little bit different than the gen 1 nodes but they work exactly the same as the gen 1 nodes. So if you want to put gen 1 nodes because you find it easier you're more used to it knock yourself out it's the same thing. Now we're going to disable free in it because because it does multiple passes, as you know, and we don't need to waste the CPU or just should say GPU cycles in this case. And I'm not doing anything fancy with the samples. They're straight samples. There are no custom samplers, nothing like that. Because the genius of it is that it all goes into an IP adapter, which is doing all the encoding of the image into a latent. I think that's really cool. But instead of a latent here, we use embed. So imagine if you will, this is like doing a V encode like this, passing it the pixels of the image, the V from the model, outputting a latent to a sampler. If you don't understand what I'm trying to say, let me show you one I made earlier. So here's one I made earlier. And just to be clear, do not do this, okay? This is the bad way, but it's the naive way, the, na the naive way I had because I was young, I was inexperienced. <laughs> it works exactly the same way, but the difference is that I had put this sampler custom because I was trying to be clever and use a LCM scheduler to alternate between two different sampler so that it would look better because hey, in animate diff LCM, that's how it works, right? If you guys are used to it. So we got the usual beta schedule at LCM 100 OTS, everything's happy and we're switching between samplers here between Euler and LCM because the again the output is better. But then the problem is that I need to decode because I need pixels. I need pixels for ultimate SD upscale. And ultimate SD upscale because I wanted to get the best quality, you see? I thought I'm going to be smart and I'm going to pass it a model which is going to be using say DPM2 SD GPU Keras because hey, quality, right? But that doesn't work, guys, because as you can imagine, what happens is this becomes pixel and then Ultimate SD Upscaler crunches through it and generates a different image. So what happens? Not only do we lose temporal consistency, but in addition, it takes forever because yes, it's using LCM, sure, but it's still going back to pixels. So what's the right approach? Well, we have to go back to the real workflow, the one I gave you, this one. So what does it do differently? Well, no sampler. No sampler. And instead of a V encode, what we do is we encode embeds for IP adapter, which we then pass, bloom, straight into Ultimate SD Upscale. No sampler. Well, technically speaking, Ultimate SD Upscale is the sampler, but you get my drift. And it's using LCM with SGM Uniform. So what does that mean? It means fast. How fast? Uh, just about 30 times faster. <laughs> so why iterate, right? Why do all this? Well, I have a video about this. It's a numbers game, guys. So you want to iterate. You want to do as many images as possible. And then, of course, you have the usual video combine. And maybe a little something different here. I use Film VFI. Again, that was recommended by the author of the Zero Scope Nodes. Okay, Rife 49 works just as good in frankness. It depends on your video. So let's recap. We have Animate Diff being loaded. Now, again, be careful because Animate Diff, it needs to have its motion model loaded. We're going to use SD 1.5 T2V checkpoint because we have an SD5 model. I haven't tried this with SDXL. If you want to try it, knock yourself out. It might not work because obviously there's the story about the control nets, but yeah. And of course, we have the LCM Animate LCM LoRa because without that, we can't use LCM. This is your standard LCM workflow, really. The 
important part is that instead of going through a sampler, we're not. I think you get it by now. So what else could I tell you about this? Well, it's a 2x upscale. So if you wanted to risk it at 4x, if you have the VRAM, but more importantly, I think this is more a question of do you have the VRAM and the processing power to go with it, you could. The seed, you can leave it fixed. Technically, that's not gonna change much. The steps, obviously six, it's LCM. It would be fun if you guys wanna try lightning, right? Try lightning model, see if it works. Uh, there's a lot of things we could try. Hey, it's Stefan from the future here. So yes, someone had the idea just at the same time as I did. So that's cool. I'll go and I'll implement this in the next version of this workflow. You can find it on my Discord. Thank you. We do need to fix the tiling, so that's why I'm using half tile seam. Again, this is not an upscaler tutorial, but it works exactly how you would expect the upscaler to work. So you need to fix the seams because if you don't, because this is tiled, you're gonna have lines in your image and we don't want some ugly lines, we want a beautiful picture. The other thing I need to touch on is the control net. So we apply a control net, but it's not just any old control net. It's control gif for zero scope. I've included the link in the description like everything else. And uh, I also included the recommended values, but of course don't lower it too much because then the image loses consistency. And look, sometimes it's great for some special trippy effect. I've done some cool stuff with that, but it's up to you how you use it and what value you put in. And another tip I can give you is you need to test your models. So what I do for this, I have a workflow which does just that. So it's super simple. It's got a SDXL prompt, it's got an SD5.5 prompt, and then what it does is simply case samples the image so I can modify the parameters and it tests three upscalers. Now, why do I do this? Because on some images, you see those ugly lines yeah, it's not that great, but other upscaler might do a better job. This looks a little bit organic, but it's got weaknesses. Maybe the background's not as good. So, you know, we could go into masking and all this, but it becomes completely overkill at this point. In any case, it's a good way to test your models. And I would recommend highly that first, before you choose any settings in the real workflow, that you go on a little workflow like this one in order to test your CFG, your steps, your sampler, your scheduler, in order to make sure that the output from the prompt corresponds to what you expect as an output, because whatever the output is will be what the upscaler will use in order to improve your video. So you want to get this as close as possible to the results you expect. As usual, join us on Discord if you want to share what you've created with this workflow or how you've improved, specifically how you've improved it, because I know it can be done, especially with this new upscaling technique for videos. Please consider leaving this video a like if you find it useful or if you learned something. It really helps with the algorithm. Talking about algorithm, there's some great videos on your screen we you should go check out because the algorithm is never wrong. I'll see you on Discord, guys. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.